Joe, so who are we here with? Bullshit. <laughs> we'll talk shit to anyone. <laughs> Joe is built like a Grinch. Fuck you. I need full balls. Yeah, he's spaghetti, spaghetti. Check, check. Yeah, it sounds Yeah, like there we go. Aw, oh, dude. That's cool. You just put, like, I... I would just punch buttons. I wouldn't eat. Like, he looks like he knew what he was doing, though. So I was like, "That's that's tight." Torin does. I, don't know anything. I don't. I'm just guessing the whole time. I know that's. Yeah, simple. Torin just knows more than I do. That's all you need to know. I, oh yeah. I just I never did video. I just convinced Christian that I knew video. You just, you just have to know more than the person just paying you for it. <laughs> that, oh, that's good. It is. Just enough to get by. Make it yeah. till you make it. All right. Oh, it is true. It's all like right. I'm in like a chilling we good pose. Up? All right. Battery's good all around. Oh, am I good? Cameras? <clears throat> Does, <clears throat> is this close enough? Is this yeah, good for yeah, me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just I, like every sure, time I watch sure. like uh, Joe is Rogan. In, is he in shot? Yeah. Two bars on this one. Okay. Uh, we should have a battery Two on bars. charger. Let's go ahead and just swap it now. We'll yeah. do fresh batteries. Cool. Yeah, every time I watch Joe Rogan, he's always like pull closer to your face, and I'm just I, like, oh, I don't want to be that guy. So, it's like. When I podcast, you know, I always like exactly. to be, like, I always like to be right here. Like I like to be right on the mic. Really close. That's just like that's just what I'm used to. I feel like I'm like a mouth breather, so I try to be away from it. Because <laughs> every every time we play Call of Duty, everyone's like, Christian, stop fucking breathing yeah, because so hard. You put your, your headset like right next to your nostril. No, I just breathe hard. I have like scar tissue all up my nose and you guys make me feel self conscious. He made me tattoo it. it. It's David. I yeah. said, not me. This man <laughs> made me tattoo like the, <laughs> the inside of his nose. <laughs> Yeah, I had, like scars and shit. But the, okay, so to be fair, I tattooed like, literally all of Emma's nose. When That's we, when insane. We and he didn't I'm fucking move so a bit. <laughs> yeah, you gotta move that big ass. I wonder how that had to. He was dead, bro. I need to put like. He didn't... I, oh, you know what I should do? I should put the podcast logo up on this screen. Yeah. Oh, you're so clever. So clever. I bet you can't guess what I'm doing tomorrow, Christian. What, tomorrow? Black and gray realism. Really? My specialty. <laughs> have you seen him? Have you seen like his black and gray stuff? No. It's no. trash. I dude, it's so highly funny. doubt that. <laughs> it's really highly, trash. highly it's doubt so that, dude. It's so I, uh, well, other stuff would you so tattoo? <laughs> like, I, I mean, obviously, we all love doing pop culture. I mean, I know and that's like more of like the subject, but like, what would you tattoo if, would you get into like neo trad, traditional? Oh god! If anime dude. didn't exist, where it's would not well, it's JP not only if anime didn't exist because it's like more like a like an illustrative way yeah. that like that would be like the style. But like, what other? Uh, new new school looks like a lot of fun and very challenging too. Like, there's the like, like I feel like I would get in a new school. the The first tattooers that I ever like looked up to were were new school artists. Yeah, so, which ones? On uh, Jeremy Miller. Um, Jesse, what's the last name? Jesse, something. Oh, Smith. Jesse Smith, Craig Foster. Um, God, I'm trying to like dig him back to my memory of all my favorite ones. There is another dude. I can never remember this guy's last name. It's Josh something. I think he was on season one of Ink Master. It was like the, one of the only seasons oh, I've ever watched. Oh, um, you're talking about. He got kicked out because his blueberries were too big. <laughs> <laughs> You talk to him all the time. Yeah, bro. yeah. He's, he's in Cali. Yeah. 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 Here he's on my thing. I don't remember his yeah, last name. There's, I, but I yeah. But yeah. Dumb as fuck. I, I was like hanging out with him like last year. <laughs> oh wow, dude. I'm so I'm so bad with remembering names. So like, like what? Well, yeah. What with new school? I remember Craig Foster was was a really really big one. I really liked his illustrations yeah. a lot. So good. Oh, Victor Chill. Chill. Victor Chill. Yeah. He's to me. He's like he's like what Simon K. Bell is to anime tattooing. I feel like Victor Chill is that to new school tattooing. Yep. His yep. tattoos are just absolutely beautiful to look at. So so yeah, those are, those are the guys. <laughs> I wish I could see new school like like Naruto as like a fucking new school character mm -hmm. with like his eyebrows like fucking like big old head. Yeah, and yeah. Look like it's carved out of play doh. Yeah, like I would love to see like Kelly Kelly Dottie do like. Uh, do like anime characters and Dude, she was slaughtered. Awesome. yeah it would i mean it would it would be cool because it's it's kind of a, a unique take on it because mm -hmm. like there's neo trad anime there's traditional anime so if like any of those i mean mosh cow did a really cool anime piece through that pan, yeah that was yeah, insane yeah. dude that was so rad so it would be kind of cool to kind of see like that sort of twist on it um so yeah that, i think that'd be really tight see some traditional like anime tattoos uh xanthian moon because so clean. Yeah. We said what? You can go. You can talk. <laughs> you can talk. What are you gonna say? We haven't officially started. Okay, 
can talk to you. Well, you can talk through, you can talk the, throughout the whole entire thing anyway. <laughs> yeah. You can say whatever you want the whole she, time, too. She, she, <laughs> you're part of this, man. Yeah. She legitimately looks like she did something bad. <laughs> She's like, oh my God. I can't Look, what, you gonna, what are you going to say? <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she does, but she does. She does like traditional. She, you could tell that her background is traditional, traditional, and she just applies it to the subject matter that's, that she likes. Dude, that's yeah. rad. I love. See, I could. I. I feel like the more I learn about like some of the more modern anime tattooers, like you see that though. Like I can tell which anime tattooers came from like Neo Trad because of the application they do, uh, and I know Mike's one of them. Like. And I've yeah. seen other tattooers that they have like similar layouts and uh, approaches to it, and I'm like, oh yeah, I could tell you came from Neotrad. And then yeah. like, you dig back far enough, and you see it, and you're like, all right. So that that's really cool. I think that'd be a really cool combination is traditional and anime. Yeah, that'd be fun. Maybe I'll try it. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> Give it a shot. We'll see. It. Change my style for like a month and be like, all right, that was cool. <laughs> I think it's cool when artists try to do that. I always. You know, you, uh, it's not even just like evolving, but you're just trying new things and seeing, mm -hmm. seeing what works. And we were talking about it a couple of days ago. Oh, yeah. Just being like, oh, yeah. that looks really cool. Do it for like a month and be like, all right, that was rad. But you've been traveling for like the last like couple months in different shops. Mm -hmm. Like, what's that experience been like? Uh, I know you're in like California. So I'm sure taking some ideas and concepts for what other people are doing and even like techniques and applying them to your own stuff. Yeah, it's been it's been amazing. Everyone's so cool, like that I've met so far. Uh, I really like. I loved Ronan at uh, Peanut Shop. His everyone there is so so nice, dude. Like they go in there and they make you feel like you're at home. And uh, Cheeseburger and all them has been super helpful. Like I want, I would, I could shout every one of them out and be like, every one of them is like the <laughs> nicest it. people. Dude. We got time. <laughs> uh, all the one, all the names I can remember. Uh, <laughs> But uh, but yeah, at Peanut Shop, uh, he's got an apprentice named Enzo, and I all right, right uh, Enzo Enzo Ferrari, right? Okay, uh, super rad dude. That's man. his real. That's his name. I don't. I don't think so. No, he's, Enzo Ferrari really is like. <laughs> I know it's a real guy. Bro. It's a real guy. <laughs> but no, he uh no he but it's I think that because he's a, a a rapper I think like a he's an artist like a he also a like, musician and stuff. He's a, he's a super rad dude. Um, but yeah, like everyone, everyone from that shop, dude, was so rad. There's a dude there, uh, Moss. I'm actually really impressed with how good I'm remembering these names right now. But <laughs> Moss uh, is like my, he's like my Pokemon brother out there. Oh, so let me tell you what. I, this is why I don't like opening other people's packs for them because all my luck goes to them. Like I can open up two ETBs, like a bunch of packs, and I get just garbage for myself. And then I went out there, and he's like, "Oh man, let's open up this uh, it's a booster box of uh, evolving evolving skies." Yeah. Um, and uh, I pulled both Chase Umbreons out of it, both of them. Wow. I never pulled those for myself, and it was funny because he's like, "He's like, all right, yeah, you can have these packs, and I'll have these packs." And I pulled both those Chase Umbreons. He's freaking out so bad. I was like, "I can't keep these for my dude." <laughs> yeah, <fuck> that. <laughs> so I was like, that's just like uh, I didn't pull anything. Yeah, oh, let me just he, stick this in there. We were freaking out, dude. Well, he was really nice. He gave me uh, one of the Chase Umbreons, uh, and he well, he he kept the one obviously that was worth like four hundred dollars. But um, yeah, but I thought that was really nice. But I just as soon as I pulled it, I was like excited and also like. Fuck, dude. Oh, can I cuss on this? Like, yeah. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I cuss a lot. So. I'm a fucking degenerate, so okay. <laughs> what do you want from me? Yeah, you can curse. Okay, You're cool. Fine. All right. I'll Because, yeah, I, I try to censor myself sometimes. And I'm like, God, I can't do it. I try to do that because I curse way too much. Like, I say fuck... <laughs> like it's like but it's it doesn't like it doesn't sound good when you're like listening to yourself you're like man i curse way too much yeah so. too much cussing so i try to i try to dial it down but no you don't have to okay cool cool is it, it don't because i'm like the only time i ever really think about it is when i'm doing something that i feel like is like official or if there's a kid in the room and i'll be like oh shit oh shit i'm cussing yeah. oh fuck i'm cussing <laughs> 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 like the cool thing is most of the people i know that have kids they don't care if i cuss around them so i'm like oh, thank god dude. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it's it's hard. It's like sometimes when I'm at line at Disney or something, and I'm like just like talking to Maddie, and I'm like, oh my god, I sound I'm rated R within the first two seconds of talking. <laughs> so. so you're gonna bring Russell down to where are you guys gonna go? Disney, uh, Universal and Disney. Yeah, both. Why not? Have Ball out. Nope. 
I just want to go and come back broke. <laughs> That's very easy to do. Yeah, Universal Disney. Yeah, Don't buddy. Just getting in the park, you're broke. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Yeah. What does it cost to go there? Oh gosh, dude. Um, that's I don't know. So we have the and me and Maddie have the annual passes, but it depends because like if you're not like, are you paying for parking? Are you getting the food package? Are you just going for the day? And I think they do now where uh, busier times of the year the prices go up and then it slows down. And like slower times of the year they go back down. Uh, so I mean I I know it's over. It's going to be like 115 to 150 per person for the day. That's not uh, too bad. And then you're buying, then you're buying some extra yeah. stuff. Well, he's, I, I, I told him I was like, you got to do the park offer for Universal because then you can ride Hogwarts Express to the other side. Yeah. So I was like, you got, you got to do that. It's an experience all on its own. Even the, the whole ride is a, it's its own. Uh, oh man, like it's like theme. you're in Harry Potter. They come yeah. with snacks and shit. What? Yeah, but so you can buy like a chocolate. Fro- There's one kid that cracked us up because. He wanted to make sure that he had a chocolate frog before he got on the express, so he can eat it while he was on the on the train. And I was like, "That kid gets it, dude!" <laughs> like, I was like, "That's," I couldn't eat a whole chocolate frog. They're like this big, and it's oh, just solid man. milk chocolate. I I can eat like a foot off of it and be good for the week. I still do that now. <laughs> and then the butter beer too. We were talking about the, the butter, butter beer, beer dude. I, yeah, dude, I'm dying I've, to go. I haven't been to Universal since Harry Potter opened. Oh like my the last gosh! Last time I was dude. there was when they were still building it. Yeah. Are you gonna go do like the whole wand thing, wand experience? Probably. That's the cool. I have Voldemort's wand Yeah, you do, you do this, already. and then the water. Because you need to go to all of Anders and like yeah. get the wand selection and everything. Yeah. I um I love Voldemort a lot. So one of my clients got me Voldemort Swan from there, but I've never got to pick out my own. So. Oh, dude, wait till you, it. You're gonna. You're probably gonna the like wand. fall out of your head. They have it. Oh, they do. They, yeah, they, yeah. Dude, they have every wand you can think of, and then some. They have some that aren't like character wands, but they're interactive ones. So throughout the throughout the Harry Potter parts of the park, they have areas where you do stuff with your wand, and it'll tell you what to do, and it'll actually move stuff around. Yeah. Like like you're actually that's magic. Rad. Yeah. That's that was rad. the Star Wars thing that you guys did in the uh the, the hotel, right? How, it was how crazy was that? Yeah. <laughs> was oh, did you do the, yeah, the Star like Cruiser? Made, yeah. Made his own, oh. yeah, lightsaber and everything. Dude, I planned out my character for months before I got there because it's fully immersive. Like once you once you're on there, there's no Star Wars or Disney branded things. Like you're actually in there. So every employee, Bro. everyone treats you like there's like you can either you could do it like uh, you could just go on vacation. That's what it is. Or you can involve yourself in the story. And they, on your phone, you have a data pad of tasks that you can do and interact with it. And uh, that's so rad, dude. dude. That's like, so rad. I I so I wanted to be a double agent, which is not actually a thing that you can do on the on your on the app. So I was like, I'm gonna infiltrate the first order and I'm gonna find first order sympathizers. Um, among the guests, and then I'm going to get them all into one location and turn them into um, the resistance. And it was funny. I felt bad because by day two, there is this family that was like all aligning with First Order, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna betray these guys, dude!" Like, <laughs> and like I got like the all like the bartenders that aligned with like the First Order like secretively, and it was cool because if you say the right things, I actually they open up a hidden compartment and they give you a, a badge that when you flip it it has the resistance on it and if you show that to anybody that's in the resistance they'll know that you're you're cool so i would i was wearing that and then whenever i'd be talking to like somebody that i felt aligned with the resistance i'd flip it and they would just give me the nod and i was like I, I, they will show up to you at dinner there's this guy like one of the singers uh gaia she's like the famous singer on the ship like mm. the lady gaga of it her uh the guy that works for her, her manager, he's a really hard guy to get a hold of. But when I finally got a hold of him, I was feeding him all the information. And when we were eating one time, he came up and sat down with me and he's like, like helping, he's like, do we have any locations like dialed down? Like you're that immersed is, the entire time. Insane. It was wonderful. And I was drunk the whole time. So I was like, <laughs> I was like this is great. I was in that bar so much. Dude. <laughs> like I'm, everything could be like, like everything was like a whole like re- like like a whole experience. So like you didn't break mm-hmm. character ever while you were in there, or for the most part. I mean, I know the certain things that you. For the most part, I was I 
stayed pretty true to what I was staying, what I was trying to do. And what's cool too is like there's even secret rooms that if when you complete certain missions, you unlock those secret rooms. And you had like at one point you had to save Chewy or the people that like there's so many different missions and the story is unique to however you're playing it. Like there's one kid who was trying his hardest to beat to do complete everything and I was like I don't think he can dude <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Uh, but he was yeah. trying he would he wouldn't take it and that was the family I ended up betraying by the way <laughs> oh. like, yeah I felt bad it was funny because at the end of it I got I got so tired I fell asleep and then Maddie was talking to that family and she's like by the way because like the experience is like coming to an end now and Maddie was just like yeah J- JP was <laughs> betraying you the whole time. <laughs> He How was, long did it last for? It's two days. Uh, two yeah, days. two days, two nights. And what's cool, even when they take you to Batu, the park version of it, there's even stories inside the park that you can do. Like you'll see characters running around. They look and and if you're just a regular park goer, you have no idea what's going on. But if you're a part of the Star Cruiser, you're like, oh, I need to find this character and talk to Dude, them. Dude, that is I'm gonna have that's to wild. <laughs> it's so it's yeah. so dope. How I tell everybody, immerse yourself. Just let it take hold and have fun dude it's i wish they had nice. more of that for for disney for marvel oh yeah i mean can you imagine them I mean, they probably in japan they probably have all, all that but i know even with Nintendo, i think we'll probably see crazy. more of it too, if like absolutely. the success of the star wars one i guarantee yeah. they're gonna start doing more i can see uh, harry, if harry potter did it I would, oh my God, <laughs> well that's yeah and but they have they have the structure to be able to do it at universal because everything like you even see with the wands but like could you imagine that you can go inside of like all those buildings, like mm-hmm. those like facades that are like crazy looking, like being able to like go in there and there's a whole entire story. Oh my gosh, I and love having, it. Like missions and stuff. That's so crazy. Cool. It's it really was more special than I even anticipated it being. Like I knew it would be cool, but it was even cooler than I thought. And the food is was incredible. So it's all it's all included on what your your payment. So you don't have to buy any of the food. You have to buy the alcohol. But uh, so you can eat as much of it as you want. It's just rotating throughout the day. And it's all like incredible, like five star level food. Yeah. And I was like, I, I, I kept having to take naps because I was like, I was drinking so much and I couldn't stop eating. I just was like a bloated dude walking around <laughs> everywhere. I was like, this is just too good. The blue shrimp, the shrimp is like neon blue. What? Yeah. So is it just a restaurant? Is it is it a couple of restaurants and then like your hotel room or is it a big hotel like what? so, it, it it's kind of like a cruise ship in the sense there's like cabins, and the the cabin rooms are really neat because they're all themed out so the windows look out into outer space and it's like this projection screen that it just makes it look like you're actually flying through space and then you have an AI assisted droid that you can call. And then this droid pops up on the screen, and then you can ask it questions, whatever you need from it and stuff. Um, and then you go into, like, the main hall, and then there's, like, a bunch of, like, sectional rooms and stuff. And they've got, like, the uh, the bar and everything. So it's really – oh, and the, the restaurant area is, like, massive. And it's also, like, a concert room, so that's where Gaia and stuff sings. So it's – it, it really is insane, dude. Well, like, just when you're looking around, and there's, like, rooms that you can't get into that you're, like – what is in there if you have to do missions yeah. and then it'll unlock that room that's and, nuts i feel oh. like that's gonna have to be a vault adventures is going yeah, on yeah, yeah we should yeah bro just come with me in a couple weeks it's in california no oh. that's it it's in florida the, the one that you're talking about is in mm-hmm. florida yeah it's in well, orlando just bring jess come we have to bring weeks. yeah Je- jess and, and my new and the new baby <laughs> hey man he's like Can't i wasn't thinking about good. it <laughs> <laughs> well I, so I think that, uh, I mean, especially with anime, pop culture, a lot of the stuff that surrounds the things that we enjoy, explain like how SadFam is trying to give people an experience just like the experience that you had at, uh, at Star Wars. You know, I know that you, it's not just about getting a tattoo, just mm-hmm. like it's not about staying at a hotel. Like explain how SadFam set up and the things that, why like clients have like, gone nuts about sad fam uh so the the one of the many rad things about sad fam is like we like we have like a massive like movie theater size projection screen that's always playing anime we have uh two sort of like lounge rooms so we have one upstairs where me mike and brian tattoo at 
and it's just like a huge couch we've got like a bunch of video games a massive tv up there and then we have three tvs inside of the the downstairs lounge room and it's really cool the way uh mike had it built too so you go up steps like a couple of steps and then the floor goes into the ground where there's like a couch and a rug and stuff and so that one's cool and it's a lot darker in there so it's like more like of chill vibes and stuff uh and then we have the arcade room that uh one of the local bars there is all called arcade monster and they helped us with that they like don't and that, these are these games are crazy it's like like literally like i saw some and, of them dude yeah, they're yeah. insane dude we have some games that there's only two of in the entire country um yeah he was like showing us this stuff and i was like what sucks is one of them only has the tutorial that you can play but you're essentially a gundam you're like this giant mech and you you, like fly dude in the the chair is like hydraulic so you actually have to be seat belted in because (laughs) you're like being hydraulic around it's got and it's got multiple screens so you have one on the side over here where like the characters and stuff are like talking to you on like a comm and you have to like hit stuff and you're watching this it's crazy it's like you're actually in it um but yeah so that's what's really cool about that experience is we want people to like we not just like you know hang out in a waiting room and stuff it's like dude go do all this other stuff watch tv if you have a friend or you know a family member because we allow like plus ones and stuff Mm -hmm. it's like you know they're not they're not just sitting there like bored or something we're like no man go play video games watch some anime with us um so yeah, we made a place that we wanted to hang out as much as we hope other people would want yeah. to hang out at too. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's how that, <laughs> I mean, that's, that, really cool. that's how we do it. But yeah, I think you and Russell are the exact same person. That <laughs> to, to you guys, that's a compliment. I love Russell. <laughs> yeah, I love that both of you guys just enjoy what you do and you let that shine through. And there's nothing like extra that you need to like peel away to get to know you guys. Like you guys wear your hearts on your sleeves mm-hmm. and. So, like, um, the same questions that, that I've asked, like, Russ, like, how has it been? Because I know, you know, when you first started out, you weren't doing these tattoos that you're doing now. Mm-mm. And I think that um, <clears throat> with social media, which we always go back to social media, I think we should every single time that we're on this podcast. Ex- can you explain it to, like, there are n- new tattoo artists that love anime, love pop culture, they want to tattoo these things that they see you guys successful with. Um, but I just shared something on Instagram is that they never know that success to, or the path of success mm-hmm. that you've taken to get where you're at and they kind of just see it and that's, that's what they want to do right now and they don't understand like how it, it's like not working. So explain like even, I mean, you don't have to explain from day one, but <laughs> explain the things that you were tattooing when you first started. Uh, when I first started tattooing, I kind of was just doing like whatever came in the door because the shop I was at did everything based off like a seniority system. So like all the cool stuff was like, it went to all the other artists that have been working there longer than I have. So I got like whatever the trickle down was. So I got really good at doing fine line tattoos because I saw like a, like a huge like opening for it because most tattooers would turn that stuff away. And so I was like, well, I mean, I'll, I can, I'll figure it out. I'll figure out how to do fine lines. So I started getting like really good at that. And then after a couple of years, I got like bored with it and sad with it. Cause I was like, this is cool. And I like my clientele, but I was like, I just want to, I've always wanted to do anime and I would see other people doing it like Simon Bell, like, and you know, all the, like Isnard and all them. And I was like, I just don't know how they do it. How do they do only that? How is that what they post every day? Uh, and so I just kind of took like the risks of losing the clientele that I had that I knew like this is what was you know paying my bills and stuff so I would take the risks and be like you know what I'm just going to try this I'm going to push this stuff out I'm going to really focus on doing this stuff and it was really nerve wracking for a long time because like until that clientele started building up I was like am I making a huge mistake am I letting somebody else have this um but yeah, I guess like just just take those risks. Like really, just know what it is you want to do, because like if you hold yourself back like that, you'll just you know you'll just be upset all the time. You know, yeah. if you want to play the safety card. But I guess like this, like, this also be a good piece of advice too for like everyone that's wanting to do this. Like it's trying to balance out like posting things that you want to continue doing. So I would come in and work on my days off to 
tattoo things I want to do at a huge discount so I can advertise that stuff. Um, so that, that I know that's like really helpful as far as the hurdles go. It's like weird. Cause some of them were just like more like internal where I didn't know if that's, if I could do that stuff. I didn't know if it was possible. Um, and then having this sort of like find it in myself to get over that. I, I mean, I did have some, some weight put on me like early on in my career. Cause like the shop I was in was a little bit more like traditional minded in the sense that like you kind of have to do like pay your dues essentially which is just you know do walk-in tattoos and really not enjoy your job (laughs) for a long time until like you know the the older folks in the industry were like well i hated my job for like five years before i got to do something cool and and so that that was that was hard because then when you if you feel like you're speeding up the process like you are starting to do cool stuff sooner than you were told you could then you're like am i am I coming off as ungrateful? Am I rushing it? Am I making mistakes that I don't know I'm making? And so that, that really sucked. Cause like you're trying to impress your, your peers and stuff like that. But sometimes your peers are also the same people that are holding you back. Yeah. Um, and it sucks. Cause I see a lot of tattooers now that are only been doing it for like a year or two years and they're excelling. And it's because they, there's not as many restraints and you know, there's yep. nobody pushing them down and they're allowed to, take risks and and learn the way they want to learn and it's really cool to see that uh terrifying a little bit <laughs> but super cool but you see the growth though I yeah mean, you see the growth when someone's not carving that path for you mm-hmm. you know like this is what you have to do next at this time and then you have to do this at this time and then the next one but it's like this world when you own a business no one no one is there to tell you you can't grow this much at this time you have to do this you have to do this you do your own thing you do whatever that works for you and tattooing is no different you own your own business you're your own brand you're your own growth so I, that's what i never understood was the uh <clears throat> was other artists and shops saying that you can't have this in this timely fashion that you yeah. want it but I, I do know the balance of that because you can't, you could want those things, but if you don't get them, you can't be discouraged because you have to know that it, it happens in time. But if it happens fast for you, then it makes sense and it should. But I've seen, I have seen people see the success in other tattoo artists fast and they're like, you got to slow down. You're like, what? Yeah, like, no, it doesn't it's, make any sense. It's just like a projection, I think, of, unfortunately, it's a projection of, like, some tattooers, like, insecurities, because things do change, and back in the, you know, back in their time, when, you know, 25 years ago when they started tattooing, things weren't the way they are now. You did have to be kind of a jack-of-all-trades, like, you you did have to know how to do black and gray, tribal, uh, color, like, all, you know, everything. You had to know how to do that, and so it's like they're applying what they had to do from their time to you and then you're like well that's just not how things are anymore and they don't want to hear it because like in their mind they're like well i'm wise i've been doing it for a long time you're a kid you don't know what you're talking about and so it it was some of those hurdles i mean even like me using an ipad was was met with like a lot of friction and stuff like that and i and and it sucked because it's like at at some point i'm like i'm an adult I'm not a yeah. kid. Like, yeah. if this is the if these are the tools I want to use, and w- you know what worst case scenario you were right and I do fuck up, I'm an adult. I have to you know I have to take responsibility yeah. for that. But it 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 sucks. Like, cause sometimes I know that those sorts of fears and stuff that people implement are sometimes it, it's coming. It could be coming from a good place, but sometimes it is just coming from from fear and an inability to learn like how times have changed since yeah. they got into the industry. So it's like, I don't, I'm not like, I'm never upset with anybody, but I'm also kind of like with like newer generations of, ta- of like tattooers wanting to get into the industry. I'm like, don't be afraid to take shots because you'll look back and you'll say like, man, if I had the opportunities in those first couple of years that some of these newer people are having, God, yeah. how much further would I be now? Yeah. So to not have those regrets, like, just just know what your worth is and have that goal in mind but really fall in love with the journey that gets you to that goal Mm. yeah and 
I mean, even to your point, it's uh, I don't like people being discouraged to the point where they're just like, up, oh, I might as well quit now because I didn't get it fat. Like, I'm like, listen, people before you had to grind for mm -hmm. five plus years to get those things that, that you see on Instagram with, with, it looks like instant success, you know? And, um, but, but to also have that like perseverance to be like, I want to, I want to, get to just like you and what you're tattooing. I want to love all the things that I do tattoo and I know it will take time, but I'm willing to take the time to get there. Um, so it is a little bit of both. Like obviously social media plays in a part where you just see like the highlight reels of everybody else. Mm -hmm. You don't know how long it took them to get there, you know, like um, in, until, and that's why I think it's, it's great for people to talk about it like we are now. Oh, absolutely. Just because people just see Man, they're they're killing it. Like, how come I'm not killing it? It's like, dude, you've been tattooing for like six months. Chill the <laughs> fuck out, you know? Like, yeah, and even so, I've seen people who like just reinvent themselves too. I've I've seen tattooers that have been doing it for a long time, and they're just like, I just don't want to get stuck. And then they'll reinvent themselves and then find success in that. So yep. there's there's also that too. Like, I think it's cool to even inspire people who are like are older in the industry who have been doing it the same way for twenty twenty five years or, or more. And uh, and then them being like, okay, things have changed. I need to I need to reinvent this. Uh, and the cool thing is, they do have that knowledge to fall back on. So I, I kind of want to just see everybody be able to to see this industry and not let things hold them back from being successful in it. I think that I, I tell I tell the younger like younger folks too that are trying to get into it. I'm like, dude, go to conventions, meet people, network, yep. just ask. Like, that's what I did. My first year I went to, um, a convention and I met, uh, Cody Gower and Matt Purdy and they're a super nice Matt Purdy actually like let me sit in on some of his tattoos and gave me invaluable advice. Like I immediately saw a level up on my tattoos when I went back home and the first tattoo, I think I can't believe how good my memory is on this right now, but, um, I did a, a Mario tattoo. I had like a star and I think a couple mushrooms. But I took a lot of what he taught me and applied it and instantly saw like a growth in my tattoos. So go out and don't be afraid to ask. The worst somebody's going to say is no. And then, all right, cool. Then, you know, go talk to somebody else. Yeah. So, yeah, go out and talk to people. Go to conventions. Just be friendly. You know, like maybe have like a sticker or something to give to somebody. Uh, and any tattooer that's that's rude about that, you know, fuck them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, just, yeah. Mark them off in your list of people yeah, to never talk like, to right. again. And what's funny, I had a, uh, I had done. I remember those first couple conventions, and I'd actually met people that weren't weren't very kind towards me. And then years later, yep, <laughs> they'll come back and they'll be like, yeah. "Hey, what's up, man?" I was like, "I'm so and so." I'm like, "Oh, we met." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I do, I do remember an, you. You're an asshole, yeah. <laughs> like, I never say that. I always try to, like, equate it in my mind of, like, maybe they were just at a different part in their journey at that point. You know, yeah. I'm, I don't want it. Like, it sucks that it was like that. Maybe one day, you know, if we become closer, I'll let them know. I'm like, hey, I, I actually did meet you. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so I never hold it against them. But always try to... You know, for for the younger folks, don't be afraid to go talk to people and ask questions yeah. and stuff like that. Like that's most most tattooers are are fairly open to that kind of stuff. So do it. Take notes. Watch watch as much as you can, especially in those really cool opportunities like that. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah. I think networking is is um, is an important part that people don't really absolutely. And I mean, you're going out and guest spotting. Um, I don't want to say later on in your career. I think you're just blossoming, like you know. <laughs> Thank you. But but the fact that you're going out and guest spotting more, I encourage like other people to go guest spot and meet people. You might meet a shop that you that you feel like you want to be around more. You want to guest spot more, and mm -hmm. and um, but I think networking and meeting like such kind people. I don't I you know I don't know what the tattoo industry was like 20, 20 years ago. I know what it was like ten years ago. Um, and I still met great people 10, 10 years ago, but now I feel like with social media, um, having like access to more, more artists, um, and meeting like more artists, everyone seems to be like super cool and, and super open. So, um, 
I, I love the whole like, community, especially around like anime too. Oh, absolutely, dude! Yeah. Anim- anime tattooing is one of the most like unique like fandoms. I think it's so it's so cool. It's anime anime fans are so incredibly dedicated to to anime. So being able to do anime tattoos, be a fan of anime, and to just love it, the enthusiasm is it's amazing like so so many of the people that come in they really attach to that stuff they really like they it's not i think i was telling you earlier where i was like i was like it's not just like going into a tattoo shop and being like hey i found this on pinterest i'm I'm also not dogging on that that's fine if that's what you want to do and you like that (laughs) that's totally fine i just want to say that but um but it's not just that you know it's not just like hey i saw this and i thought it was really cute and then you get it really fast um anime fans are dedicated they're willing to wait to get tattooed they're they'll make a whole trip out of it it's like this is this means the world to them and most anime fans have been into anime since they're kids like everyone i tattoo that's in my age range we all have the same story it was all it's tsunami we were watching dragon ball z and gundam and sailor moon i mean i actually like tamtaro a lot not enough people (laughs) say that they watch tamtaro but I love that. It's it's so cool to kind of see that it is like such a rich community, and it's one that's so ingrained. Because I've been asked to you, like, do I think that anime tattooing will like phase out? Do I think it'll die off? And I'm like, no, nah, dude. Like, this is it's not it's, it's not a style. It's it's a it it's like a way of life for a lot of people. It really is. Like, it's, it's not a going, culture. It's not going yeah. anywhere. <laughs> it's a <anytime> culture. <laughs> soon. So, and you're, and good, good. Oh no, no, you can. What's up? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean. I I enjoy it and I don't enjoy it, but you see like brands like I mean fucking Jordan has anime clothes and I'm like, what do you what do you do like? And I know, but I know Playboy has it too. Yeah, Playboy has it too. But it's because Zion Zion Williamson uh, he he like loves like anime, loved anime growing up. So it's like a lot of these athletes have grew up around anime and now they're bringing that into like such different industries so i think it's amazing i love that it's in to the tattoo industry more and mm-hmm. that's thanks to guys like you sad fam russell like all all the people who genuinely love it oh absolutely you know? and i think that i think that it's great i think on the flip side there's going to be brands that have talk shit on anime that are trying to get in on anime yeah and even and even people like me like I remember there was a there was a client that was like kind of like buzzing around like, yeah, you know that owner doesn't even like watch like anime. I was like, motherfucker, I never claimed I never claimed to to be a diehard fan of <laughs> anime. Like, but if someone if someone you know three years ago getting into it, if someone wants to enjoy it and get into it more, that's the whole point. The whole community is supposed to be inclusive. No, absolutely, you know. And so, um, but I. I like am falling in love with it because I'm falling in love with the people. It's not just the shows, but it is the community. Because uh, everyone asks me about clients, you know, like, hey, how are you client? I always have clients ask me, uh, you know, what's uh, what's like a horrid story that you have? I'm like, everyone is amazing. Like these clients are <laughs> fucking nuts, you know. Dude, like, yeah, anime clients love, are the best. Dude. They're like the best people on the on the planet. And I mean, we talked about it last podcast, like how I just I just love like all the clients. But it really is this community is is it's just insane. Yeah, it's definitely it, and they're the most thoughtful people ever too. Like I get so many cool gifts from people. I have people that can sit like every post I make, they comment on it they reshare it and it's like that's so awesome they 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 take the time out of the day i try to respond to every comment that i can in the moments of time (laughs) usually like i'm on a break on on the toilet and i'm just like thank you so much thank you so much (laughs) thank you so much i appreciate it thank you so much yeah every every comment but because i know how much it means like um i think that's i think it's really cool but yeah and dude it's they're absolutely the best they're like so stoked they're so thankful and i even feel bad some days i'll have like i i I'll just be having like not a great day and I'll be like quieter than I normally am. Usually I'm like the chattiest yeah. tattooer and I'll just be like, God, I feel so bad. I feel like I owe it to everybody to yeah. in, indulge in anime. Cause I, I've, what, I, what I've realized a lot with my clients, some of them don't g- get to talk about anime every day. Like they don't get to like sort of have that back and forth conversation with somebody. Whereas I get to do it every single day. So to me, it's such a normal part of life. But some of these folks, they've been looking forward to not just getting the tattoo. They've been looking forward to talking about it, like weaving out with somebody who genuinely 
loves anime and they're yeah. surrounded by it and it's, I'm just like so some days if I'm not like feeling 100% I'm like I'm so sorry <laughs> like, yeah yeah but yeah. but because I do want to be there in that way too I want to help everybody like sort of indulge like that anime love and for them to sort of talk about it and some of the gifts people bring are so thoughtful I had, a, uh, had this dude <sighs> who painted that too yeah, yeah, yeah. there's so, like, I had this dude paint me a Lemillion mm-hmm. and I had a had somebody build me an entire Death Scythe Gundam, like the uh, the models, and so I was like, "Oh my god, that's insane!" And like, and then I get a lot of Pokemon cards. One of my favorites is this kid saw a story of mine where I posted one of my favorite card arts. I think I might have told you about this the other day, but mm. it was of Tyranitar and Sableye, and it's Sableye munching on gems and Tyranitar just like screaming in the background. And I was like, I just love that. It's just such an appealing image. I love gems. And I posted that, and so as, and that was months and months ago. I forgot I even posted that, and he bought me a ten grade of that card and brought it to me. And I looked, I was like, dude, how did you know? Yeah. And he's like, you posted it. And I was like, you guys are incredible. Yeah. <laughs> like, you pay attention to my stories. I just posted. I I don't know who's seeing it. I I just imagine everyone's just thumbing past mm. all the stories. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like here's JP movie review, dog photo, Pokemon card. Okay. <laughs> like, I think it's important for for us like as we grow as artists and as we grow in popularity um this is what we all like talked about um is being able to still show that love and show where you came from and Mm. that's where i think that you and russ are the exact same person because russ every day is like just a kid in the candy store you know and he's like that with his clients and I think when you when you lose sight of that, that it can never go away, is when you don't appreciate the clients. And I'm not saying anyone is doing that, but I don't think that we should ever lose the people who feed us every day. Absolutely you not. Know? And I, I think clients can tell, too. They can tell when, like, uh, somebody's getting too much, yeah, and, like, over the top with it. Yeah. Like, I, th- I do feel like clients can definitely sense that. Like, people can yeah. definitely see that when that happens. Yeah. And Russell... Russell's one of the sweetest human beings I've ever met in my entire <laughs> life, dude. He's like, I, I love talking to my clients about Russell because I'm like, I'm like, he is just one of the nicest dudes you'll yeah. ever meet. But I was like, he's also not what you think he's going to be when you first meet him. And then when you do, you're just like, but I, he's, he's like the human embodiment of a warm hug. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's a good way to explain like, it. Too. It's like every time you see that dude, I'm just like, man, he just oh, he's just it, just a pure human being. Yeah. And that's so. how that's how I feel about a lot of artists in in this community uh, specifically. I mean, I've been around artists for a very long time. Um but I'm only 3 years into like an anime pop culture world even even so when I was um, doing a lot of stuff with video game tats and we were building that up just seeing like how appreciative artists were in this like f- in this field community the small ver- pocket <laughs> yeah versus like what I've seen and I'm I mean obviously there's amazing neo trad artists traditional artists and stuff I, I just felt it. like it was like don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> just like, I'm trying to burp this way <laughs> so if anyone who watches this like if you see me doing this a lot I'm burping and trying not to I'm trying not to burp into Google, your guys' Google ears <laughs> but I feel like everyone just I mean obviously all the artists here all the artists at Sad Fam like just such like great people um, oh yeah dude and then even the anime ink like holy shit that buzz that buzz like around the whole entire convention was freaking crazy dude the anime ink like it, I, I i i told you this too i feel like we've already talked so much yeah. about this. uh anime ink was the first convention i ever went to that i was like i left like super happy i was tired because i worked a lot but it was it was so rad it was such a cool experience and then the second anime ink was like the same thing it was just everyone was just so nice and so excited to meet each other even if i we didn't know who the other tattooer was it was just i was still excited i was like oh i, I don't know who you are like it's like discovering like a new treasure i'm like let me see your work yeah you know yeah and it's just like <laughs> it's just like new people that you can meet and i know that i mean we can't really talk about it but i know that you have a lot of plans for your clients <laughs> jesus christ bro <laughs> you had enough how many how many no. do you guys have on the way? The here? way that I always <laughs> the way that I drink, everyone at 
the shop makes fun of me because I side sip a lot. Like why? I, drink, I don't That's know. That's why you burp a it, lot too, bro. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> it drives Mike crazy. It, a whole this dude's known me for so long now, and he still will stare at me. He's like, "Why the fuck do you drink like that?" <laughs> and Brian, same thing. They just be like, be "Like, I don't get it." So I they call me. Was it side sipping? Side sipping, son of a bitch. That's what I get a lot. <laughs> side stepping. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you guys got. Which you can't really talk about because it's in the like infant stages, but I know that you guys have something that's really awesome yeah. planned in Florida for all of your clients under one roof mm-hmm. for a specific amount of days. And um, I'm excited to see that like blow up like crazy. Um, and it's just, it's more things to involve um, more activities and and just cool shit around the community. So like, absolutely, yeah. That. It's like a like something Mike and I talk a lot about too. Is like is is the community and how like just kind of cool it is that there's not a lot of like tattoo based communities that are, are are like this. There are. I'm not I'm not trashing on any other tattoo. They're they're all really cool. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like this one's really unique in the sense that there is a a real culture around this. It's not just a style, and so. When we've done, I've done panels at conventions over the last year, uh, just just to build that community and just talk to the community directly, um, and it's been like so heartwarming to see the people who turn out for it. The first one I did, I didn't know, I I was I would have been stoked if ten people showed up, and five of those would have been people I brought with me. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it was cool. There was like lines to get into it, and so I was like, "Oh my god!" I'd like. There was one point I was like, "I was like, I walked away. I was like, I think I could cry right now." <laughs> so, <laughs> that's, that's awesome, dude. Um, but yeah, it's really just kind of focusing on that on like a bigger scale and building that community with the people from the outside looking in and the people on the inside like kind of looking out. Just kind of everybody being involved and being able to sort of like talk to each other in person. Because the other cool thing about or interesting thing I guess to you about uh, anime tattooers, like we all grew up being like huge anime nerds. And mm-hmm. so a lot of us are kind of reclusive and have a hard time getting out of our shells. I've talked to a lot of folks that just, they're, they're kind of antisocial and stuff. And so it's cool like giving everybody a safe area to come out and be themselves and be able to meet and be extroverted. Cause extra, I'm I'm incredibly extra. I can talk to anybody I'd like. I yeah. So for me, it comes so easy. So I love being able to help my friends who have a hard time coming out of the shell and being like, hey, here's the safe spot. Everybody just be yourself. Yeah. And that's what I loved about the first Anime Inc. Because I remember it was one of the first times I saw an area where I saw so much, like, lewd hentai <laughs> stuff. And I was like, just out here, right in the open? Like, we're cool with it? And I was like, I love this. Probably, probably Cheeseburger's booth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Him, what's that? Is it, oh, my, is it, is it Brian Rios? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Brian Rios. Yeah. 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 His, I, he had the Sailor Moon one. And I just walked by it, and I was like, no fucking way. That's so <laughs> rad. And it was cool, because even I watched people, like, coming up to my booth, because I have a lot of, like, loot hentai merch. And just watching people like look around, like, is it okay that I'm like buy- looking at this and buying? I'm like, dude, we're all that person. Yeah. You're fine, dude. <laughs> like, and that's that's what I love about being able to like create those spaces for uh, the community to cool. just like come out and be like, dude, be you. Wear it, yeah. wear it loud. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, being on the podcast today. You side sipping. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. This has been yeah, an awesome experience. I'm sure we'll have another episode with you know you down here or us actually. We'll probably make a trip to Sad Fam. I think we can have like the whole team on board. And Dude, that would be incredible. Like that. Yeah. That'll, that'll have to be like fun. a three hour long episode. <laughs> we got all <laughs> sure of we Sad Fam. Make it happen. <laughs> oh my gosh. We can bring enough equipment with us. So do like a panel. Yeah. We'll just have Alan there, but he won't say a word. <laughs> Oh, the one dude. <laughs> the one. He's the Sasquatch of the shop. Like, the people who have seen him, I'm like, that's a lucky thing you've done. <laughs> he's yeah. also the sweetest human being ever, too. So. <laughs> yeah, we'll try to make that work. And I think I'm sure we can. So. Yeah, that would be insane. All right, cool. Make it happen. All right, sweet. Uh, thanks to uh, White Claw for sponsoring this. Uh, please, White Claw, please sponsor me. <laughs> for sponsoring this episode. 
Pineapple is my real favorite. I don't know what I'm drinking. <laughs> I'm drinking the black, black cherry. Black cherry. I, yeah. I, dude, I, that's my second one. That's like my go-to when there's nothing else. So I gave you out of the two options, I was like, I'll give, I'll give my boy. You my said favorite. that it's your go-to when there's nothing else. That can't be your second one then. Oh no no! I mean, <laughs> <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Thanks for giving me this dog shit ass one. <laughs> I meant that in the most optimistic, beautiful way ever. That's how I meant that. All right, cool. Thanks again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Sweet.